Well, hello, University of Liggett School families. We are so excited to be able to welcome back our University of Liggett School Knights to school next week. And what we thought we'd do is put together a little bit of a video to give you a preview, a sneak preview of some of the ways in which um, our building is going to be different, our behaviors are going to be different, um, our, our, our protocols are going to be different, and of course all of that, everything that we're doing is in an effort to keep everybody as safe as possible uh, as we open our school building in a challenging time. Um, and so I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of the building. We're going to see classrooms. We're going to see uh, the dining facility uh, to try to give you a sense of what's the day in the life of a student going to look like here at school when we open up next week on September 8th. Let's go. So my day as a lower schooler or a middle schooler begins here in our traditional drop-off area um, on our canopy walkway. Uh, you'll notice on the canopy walkway we now have uh, social distance markers, our ligate shields, uh, and that's just an indication of how to keep your distance from somebody so that you stay safe. Uh, but before I step onto this particular shield to make sure I'm safe to go into the building, I want to make sure I have my mask on. Uh, our masks are the most important thing we can do to keep each other safe. Uh, and so every student should come to school with a mask um, that is at least two ply, that fits snugly around the nose and the mouth and the ears, and that protects themselves and others. Um, we really recommend that students have uh, a couple masks um, to choose from and, and so that there can always be a clean mask every day. Now there's a couple masks that don't work. Um, those would be gaiters. Um, we're not going to use gaiters in the school building. Um, those would be bandanas. We don't want to see bandanas. Those aren't, they don't cover enough. Um, and finally, we don't want to see the masks that have the cool little respirator nozzles. I know they look awesome. Um, studies show that those actually let out uh, a little too much air. Um, and so it defeats the purpose of wearing the mask. So a nice two or three ply mask, you can wear a surgical mask if that makes you more comfortable. Uh, but make sure when you step out of your car, you have that mask on and then you move on to screening. So screening is how we can be sure that you're healthy when you come into the building. So you're gonna step out of your car with your mask on, and one of our wonderful adults is gonna come over and say, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, welcome back. Thank you. Any COVID symptoms? No. Any exposure to COVID? No. Excellent, your temperature is 97.7, so you're all set to come in. I'm ready to go in the building. Let's go get our day started. Have a great day. Wow. Look who it is, it's Mrs. Dellinger, head of the lower school. Hi, Mrs. Dellinger. Hi, everybody, I can't wait to see you next week. If you notice, You'll see on the floors we have arrows, so as I'm going this direction, I'm on the right side. Mr. Brown's going this way on the right side, and we've got red dividers to help you with your six feet of social distancing. So we'll be very safe in the hallways. It's actually really great uh, experience for all of you lower schoolers for when you're going to be driving in a few years. Always stay on the right side and avoid the dotted line. So as we wander our lower school hallways, we have discovered that many of our teachers are back, uh, and a couple of them wanted to say hello. So here we are in a lower school classroom, um, so you can get a sense of some of the ways in which the furniture looks a little bit different um, for this year. And the whole goal of this new furniture, these beautiful plexiglass dividers, is just to keep everybody separate um, so that we're not sharing any germs that we might have. Um, so you're going to see a lot of these plexiglass dividers in lower school, middle school, upper school classrooms, um, just as a way to keep um, social distancing in space. Um, now if you follow me out here, the other thing we're going to try to do a lot of um, is use fresh air and to be outside. Um, we hear a lot from the experts that fresh air and being outside to the extent we can do it is really, really safe. And so we're going to spend as much time as we can outside. And if you're following me, you can see the way we're going to do that is by tents, using lots and lots of tents. So there are 27 of these 26 foot by 20 foot tents um, that are going to be assigned to classrooms. And this one here is middle school tent number seven. Um, there'll be furniture in each of the tents, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, just a space to be outside um, and to, to, to be working in an environment that's as safe as we can possibly provide, even in some inclement weather conditions. So as long as it's safe to be outside, uh, we're going to try to be outside quite a bit. Uh, we've erected 27 tents uh, here all across campus in our beautiful backyard. Uh, this is upper school tent number seven, uh, which can be used for an outdoor classroom. You can see we've got some new uh, tablet arm desks in this space to allow it to be used uh, by students and teachers. Uh, and you can even see the beginnings of wiring. Uh, this is coming from our building uh, and at some point will be used to plug in uh, a wireless array and to broadcast our Wi-Fi out here to these tents. So here we are at the front desk with Mrs. Sawinski. Um, 
Typically, this is where we greet visitors, although one of the big changes for this year is that we will have basically a no visitors policy. Any visitor, and they should be extremely rare, uh, will have to be approved by uh, me uh, or an administrator or a division head in advance and make an appointment to come in. So unfortunately, uh, to maintain the integrity of our space, we can't have visitors drop in this year. However, this is going to be an important space for students who have to come in after their arrival window. So each of the divisions has communicated the arrival window when they'll be screening uh, at the lower school doors here at the front doors for the middle school or at the arts wing for the upper school. If your student has an appointment, if your student is late and misses that window, the right drop off point is gonna be here at the front door uh, and Mrs. Slowinski is gonna be prepared to do that screening so that every student who enters our building has had their, uh, their safety screening before they enter. So we've arrived in the middle school and here's an example of the middle school classroom. Again, set up with some new furniture, some new plexiglass panels um, that allow students to work at their tables while being physically separated from each other and keeping everybody safe. Uh, and here we are in Mrs. Costanzo's room and here she is. Miss y'all, can we see you? So here we are in the middle school office with the esteemed Mr. Butler, head of middle school, and the wonderful Gal Harley, uh, the uh, middle school coordinator. Mr. Butler is going to talk a little bit about how the middle school schedule is going to operate a little bit differently this year. Hello, I'm so happy I could be esteemed, and I'm <laughs> glad to see you all here right now. We're really excited to welcome you back, middle school students. What you'll notice is that when you come back, you'll be on your student schedule. You'll have many of the same classes with a small group of students that you'll be traveling with throughout the day. This is kind of a pod or a cohort, and we're doing this to keep everybody safe, uh, among another, a number of other things that we're doing in our middle school life. So. Welcome back. We're excited to see you and we're looking forward to it. Another example of some of our floor signage. So these arrows lead up into a stairway and what that indicates is that this is a one-way stairway up here in the middle school. Uh, so students will go up stair A here um, and then we will come down the hall and you can follow the pathway and see our six-foot dividers through our middle school commons which as you can see are set, set up as additional classroom space. And then we'll come all the way down the hall here and find stair B, which is an, a down stairway. So one of the things you'll notice as you move about the building is we've got lots and lots of cleaning supplies. Here we are just in a lower school storeroom and you can see uh, we've got paper towels, we've got wipes, we've got gloves, we've got hand sanitizer replacements. Um, so we have stocked up and we're ready to go. Here I am in uh, our nurse's office with our director of medical services, Nurse Rachel, who's gonna be a really important person this year as we all try to uh, stay healthy and safe. Um, she's gonna talk a little bit about the ways in which we're trying to protect uh, our adults and our teachers. She's also gonna talk about what you can expect when you come to this space um, during the day if you don't feel well. Hi everybody, so excited to see everyone. Um, the great thing is I'm back in the same space that I was last year in the lower school same office um, adjacent to the doors to the middle school, so easy to find um, and easily accessible for everyone. We will have a separate quarantine space um, set up this year. Um, should someone get sick during the day while they're here, while we wait for them, for their parents to come pick them up. So that is wonderful. Uh, we've also outfitted all of our faculty and staff with a wide variety of PPE. Uh, we got two different kinds of fabric masks that we passed out and they're three ply for both of them. We also have surgical masks that we've given out, KN95s, safety glasses, and the ever important face shield. And these, this variety is great because everybody can pick and choose what they're most comfortable wearing and using. Now, one of the most important health and safety rules this year um, for all of our families to think about and to pay attention to is, this year more than ever, if you don't feel well, stay home. If you have a fever, if you have a dry cough, if you have nausea or diarrhea, any of those symptoms that we associate with COVID, it's really important that you stay home until you're symptom free. You communicate with Nurse Rachel and she can give you some guidance about what to do. You communicate with your doctor's office, but don't run the risk of coming in if you don't know what's going on with you, your, your body um, and, and potentially causing trouble for somebody else. So if you don't feel well, stay home, wait till you feel well talk to the medical services team here and figure out when you can get back safely. So one of the things we've spent all summer thinking about is how can we uh, ensure the safest air in the building? Um, because everything that we uh, continue to read about um, some of the challenges we face suggests that if we can if we can control the air that we can really create a safe environment. So we're going to do that a couple ways. One is we know that fresh air is good. Um, so lots of windows are going to be open. We're going to be circulating fresh air into rooms 
to the extent that we can. Second, any room that has forced air, any room that has uh, air coming through a vent, um, we've replaced those filters. So we've upgraded to what's called a MERV-13 filter, uh, which catches really, really tiny particles like the virus, um, just to make sure that that air is circulating and being filtered. In rooms that don't have forced air, like our medical services office here, uh, we have put in freestanding HEPA filters, like my friend Austin here. Uh, and Austin is on right now at level two. And what, I, uh, what Austin does is just sucks in the air, filters it, and spits back out clean air, uh, and can cycle in a room this size, can cycle the air probably a, a few times every hour. Um, and so you'll, you'll see a variety of these straight out of Star Wars in, in rooms throughout the building, and just know that um, they are running to keep our air safe, um, and we'll continue to, uh, to monitor our air and, and to do everything that we can uh, to keep fresh and clean air in our building. So as you travel throughout the building, you'll notice our ubiquitous hand sanitizer stations. There's over 40 of these uh, deployed throughout the facility with more on the way. Um, one of the most important things we can all do uh, in this challenging time is maintain clean hands. And so that's lots of washing uh, and teachers will direct students, uh, particularly in our youngest grades, to do a lot of hand washing. Uh, but also anytime you pass one of these, uh, and you're going to adjust your mask, or you're about to go eat, take a couple squirts and sanitize your hands. The, the, the extent to which you can keep clean hands is going to keep you and everybody else safe. Welcome to the cafeteria, uh, which looks a little different right now. Uh, we won't be eating here all together in this space like we normally do as much as we love that. It's just not safe for everybody to be taking off their mask and eating all together. Um, so we'll be eating in smaller groups. In the upper school, in the middle school, that's outside with small groups of friends or advisories. And in the lower school, students are actually going to be eating in their classrooms, and lunch is going to be delivered to them. And here to talk a little bit more about what that's going to look like is Jody DeVee, our Director of Catering Service. Uh, so this is what a lunch cart is going to look like every day. Uh, we are going to have hot entrees and individual layer, uh, portions with meats and vegetables and potatoes and rices, whatever the menu dictates. Uh, each classroom has their own single-service uh, napkin dispenser. We have pre-wrapped cutlery kits, fork, knife, spoon, napkin, salt, and pepper seasonings. Uh, if you kind of scroll down a little bit farther here, uh, these are going to be individual cups of maybe fruit, uh, vegetables, applesauce, things like that, uh, sandwich, peanut butter and jellies, turkey and cheese, options for kids that don't want to have the main entree that day. Those are going to be on the cart delivered every day. Uh, each classroom is going to have a name of a teacher, students. Here we've got dietary restrictions, gluten-free, vegetarian. Those things will all be available on the cart. Uh, we swing the cart around. We've got an accessory for beverages that can be milks, bottled water, juice, gets right back on the shelf. These get delivered to the classroom every day. Trash containers are removable as well, so we can actually do some moderate recycling if available. Uh, within that, that's the lower school lunch program for this year. Example of what middle school and upper school lunch are going to look like um, in either advisories at middle school or by grade level and upper school students are going to come into the cafeteria uh, and have a whole variety of options, hot and cold. Um, to be able to grab and then go. Go eat outside, go eat with your advisory, eat in smaller groups because we won't be eating together here in this big space. So let's take a look and see what the line holds today. We've got some individually packaged coleslaw. It was pizza day, so we have different combinations of pieces of pizza in our to-go containers. Uh, all the condiments we need here. Uh, and then over on the salad bar, uh, we have Caesar salads today. So lots of options to choose from, um, and that's what lunch is gonna look like for middle and upper school. So one of the things this challenge has forced us to think about is to think creatively about all of our spaces. How can we use um, some spaces that maybe are underutilized during the day to continue to try to spread people out uh, and create that all important distance? And so one of the spaces we thought about was the Bowl Campus Center lobby. Um, this is a beautiful space that we use for events, but during the day, um, not a whole lot goes on in here. And so we've actually built three classrooms, Bowl 1, Bowl 2, and the far side, Bowl 3, um, that can be used during the school day for classes in the climate control here. Uh, and come on, we'll take a look at Bowl 2. And as you can see, we've got our, our classroom furniture, some tablet arms still to arrive. Uh, we've got our whiteboard, we've got our cleaning supplies. Um, so again, uh, a creative use of space uh, that we already have just to create a little more classroom space for us, uh, for students to use. So here we are at the Arts Wing entrance, which is our exclusive upper school entrance this year with our head of upper school, Mr. Brock Dunn, who's gonna talk a little bit about that process. Hi guys, it's so good to see you all. We're looking forward to having you back on campus. Uh, check in, if you look on the ground here, you'll see uh, some, some spaced, socially distanced stickers. Uh, you'll stand there, wait your turn, and we'll check you in uh, through a screening that involves a temperature take and a couple of questions, and then we'll get about our day. 
We are looking forward to having you back real, real soon. And here we are in an upper school classroom. Again, you can see how we've used some uh, dividers, some uh, corrugated plastic dividers to separate students while using the traditional classroom furniture. We're almost ready to go. So we've made it here to the upper school, and as you can see, we have some of our uh, floor directional signage as well. But even more importantly, we have happened upon uh, a, a, a legend of the upper school, Mrs. Katanik, uh, who's here uh, getting ready in, in, in her faculty meetings, getting ready for students next week. So here we are in the uh, very rarely seen backyard of University of Lincoln School, our maintenance yard, with some of the heroes of our preparation uh, for the school year. Um, this is most of our facilities team. We've got Terry, we've got Mike, we've got Shanty, we've got Anthony, we've got Jimmy. Um, Joe and Eric are out still working. Um, they've worked tirelessly all summer, cutting plexiglass, building dividers, uh, refinishing uh, air handling units, uh, putting up tents, cutting the grass, delivering supplies. Um, we couldn't do it without.